This is Russia. The country today is subject to about 16,000 sanctions, which is more than Iran, Syria, and North Korea combined. These sanctions were imposed by the NATO countries after Russia invaded Ukraine with the aim of constraining Russia's war-making capacity by draining its revenue and crippling its economy. But something's wrong. While Russia's GDP dropped by 2.1% in 2022, it rebounded with a 2.25% growth in 2023, and its exports are already at pre-sanctions level. So how did Russia do it? Why does Russian oil still find its way into Western countries, and how do India and Saudi Arabia come into the picture? In February 2022, Russia launched a full-scale attack on Ukraine, which was the largest on any European country since World War II. Despite the global pressure to withdraw, Russia refused to back down. To counter the Russian aggression, the USA, along with its NATO allies, started imposing sanctions on it. These sanctions are commercial and financial penalties that aim to change Russia's behavior by isolating it from the global financial system, reducing the profitability of its energy sector and blunting its military edge. Of these, the most potent blow to the Russian economy was reducing the profitability of the energy sector, particularly by restricting its oil and gas exports, as over 30% of Russia's budget comes from its oil trade. NATO and allies decided to control the Russian oil and gas export in two ways. First, they imposed a ban on importing it in their own countries. Second, a price cap of $60 was imposed on any other country that wanted to buy from Russia. If any country exports oil and gas from Russia above the $60 cap, they could not use operators or insurers based in the sanctioning countries. This was a major blow as about 90% of the world's oil shipping fleets are covered by an international group of 13 marine insurance groups based in the United Kingdom. But surprisingly, even after the sanctions, Russia's oil supply has actually increased. According to the data provided by the analysis company Kepler, Russian crude oil exports increased by 50% in the spring of 2023 despite the sanction. And this is mainly because of its ties with India and Saudi Arabia. Before Russia invaded Ukraine, two-thirds of its crude exports were to European countries. After the ban, it had to find alternatives. The US, China and India are the three largest importers of oil and gas. However, China was already importing large amounts of crude from Russia. India on the other hand, was importing only 2% of its oil requirement from Russia. Plus, it is the third largest oil importer in the world, making it the perfect potential market. Russia started selling its oil, known as Ural Crude, at a hefty discount. Usually, Ural Crude is sold at a discount of $2 to $3 compared to Brent Crude because of its lower quality. However, Russia started offering Ural crude for around $30 below Brent to attract buyers from India. India saw this as an opportunity since oil and gas constitute one-third of its imports by value. Cheaper oil meant lower import costs and consequently a reduced trade deficit. So India ramped up its oil imports from Russia. In just one year, Russia became India's number one oil supplier, making up one-fourth of the 235 million tons of crude oil imported by the country. However, Russia's oil trade with India might not be as favorable as it seems. There have been many hidden costs to the transaction. According to Russian customs data, the average price per barrel of crude oil shipped to India from December 2022 to June 2023 was $50. But according to Indian customs data, India paid $68. Though Russia had been providing steep discounts and keeping the price within the sanctioned limit, it was making it up to the shipping and insurance costs as these costs are not included in the sanctioned limit. India buys oil from Russia on a delivered basis. It's up to Russia to make all the arrangements for shipping and insurance. However, post-sanction, these costs are given by three Russian-arranged shadow entities. 
According to Indian refiners, the overall identity and nature of these entities remain opaque at the time of billing. Through these entities, Russia is not only successfully keeping the price per barrel below the sanction limit, but also charging $11 to $19 per barrel for delivery. This is twice the normal rate for shipping from Russian ports to India. Next is the currency used for buying the oil. The international oil trade is typically denominated in dollars. However, due to sanctions, Russian banks were banned from using SWIFT, a dollar-dominated messaging service that lets banks communicate for cross-border transactions. With the dollar off the table and the ruble weakened by the war, India insisted on settling trade in Indian rupees. But there was a problem as Indian rupees are not easily convertible into another currency and the only way to spend rupees is in India itself. But Russia's imports from India are very low, so they forced Indian oil buyers to make payments in yuan as it imports the most from China. Then Russia slowly started shrinking its discount. The discount, which stood at $30 per barrel, came down to $4. And by October 2023, India was buying Ural oil at $84.40 per barrel. But the country continued buying Russian oil as it was still cheaper than its alternatives. India's decision to continue importing Russian oil above the price cap got a lot of heat from the West. The country was criticized for indirectly fueling the war. Uh, support for uh, Ru the Russian leadership is support for um, an invasion. But India made its stance clear. Moreover, it was the West that was actually being a hypocrite. Despite banning Russian oil, it was still finding its way into Western countries. Wait two or three months and actually look at who are the big buyers of Russian gas and oil. I suspect the list won't be very different from what it used to be. And I suspect we won't be in the top 10 on that list. According to a study conducted by the CREA, Western nations collectively imported $46 billion worth of Russian oil products just 12 months after Ukraine's invasion, and that too, legally. This happened through laundromat or third-party countries, which act as intermediaries between Russia and European countries. They buy oil from Russia, refine it into other products like diesel, and then sell it to Europe and other G7 countries. Since Europe isn't directly purchasing from Russia and the country of origin has changed, there are no legal repercussions. India, China, Turkey, UAE, and Singapore are the five laundromats that Europe has been using. These countries make up 70% of Russia's oil exports. Now, one more question here is, how can Russia export oil above the sanction limit as most of the shipping companies belong to European countries? To overcome this, Russia has acquired its own shipping fleet. These are aging tankers purchased by unnamed entities that go defunct once the transaction is completed. Russia has been using more than 600 of these ships to transport its oil at a rate much higher than the sanction limit. In 2023, shadow fleets were responsible for 45% of Russia's oil exports. Russia also used Saudi Arabia in its game plan. On one hand, Russia was exporting oil at a discounted rate. On the other, it was trying to increase the price of crude oil by exploiting Saudi Arabia's new rivalry with the US. Putin very well used Saudi Prince Mohammed bin Salman's resentment towards Joe Biden, the US president, who had once criticized the prince for human rights violations and the gruesome killing of Washington Post columnist Jamel Khashoggi in 2018. In October 2022, both countries, being the strongest members of OPEC+, use their position to cut back on oil production by 2 million barrels per day. That is about 1% of global demand. Now, what is OPEC Plus? It is the organization of oil exporting countries that regularly meets to set oil production targets and coordinate output to help manage global oil prices. Here, you can see the per day production cut done by Russia and other members of OPEC Plus. According to the organization, this was done with the aim of stabilizing the market. However, Russia's motives were clear. For it, a shortage of oil supply in the market meant higher prices for oil. 
which in turn helped increase its revenue. And according to Bloomberg, in October 2023, Russia made $11.3 billion in oil revenue, more than what the country made in any single month before it invaded Ukraine. The country also used this deal as an attack against the United States, which had asked Saudi Arabia to increase its oil production in order to lower gasoline prices for American consumers during the winter. So that's how Russia strategically used India's need for cheap oil and Saudi Arabia's rivalry with the US to keep its economy afloat despite the sanctions. But the question remains, who will ultimately win this tug of war? And is the West really that righteous?